Good evening, everyone. I want to thank Heather and IntraHealth for organizing this event and uh, having us here. I'm keen to hear the other speakers and um, have an evening uh, with everyone else here. Thank you very much for having me. This is my first time in Chapel Hill. The talk today I want to give you is on mobile telemedicine, which I'm very passionate about. And we'll start. Botanas is the smallest and northernmost province of the Philippines. It is a six-class municipality with a doctor-to-patient ratio of 1 to 17,000. The province is staffed by general practitioners and only one specialist. Although the province has a radiology machine, it does not have a radiologist available and must send all x-rays away for interpretation. The turnaround time for this process is two to three weeks. While wireless internet is present in the capital of Batanas, the further municipalities within the province only have mobile connectivity. The problem and shortage of human resources and technical capacity is a well-recognized problem in the developing countries, particularly in rural communities. What you saw here in this video clip demonstrates what we see in most rural communities in the developing countries, where hospital beds are appalling, uh, the number of computers with internet connectivity is poor and the only connectivity in most places is mobile phone connectivity and the population you can see is enormous in the rural and when communities. When you go to Manila for consultation or for medical purposes, you really, you really have to sell everything. Your cows, your carabaos, your fields, your farms you have to, to sell them to be able to reach Manila. So poverty, isolation, and uh, difficulty distance in traveling and lack of basic health facilities are what led to this 75-year-old Filipino man trying to seek a simple medical consultation and being airlifted to Manila, often uh, traveling long distances, making a delay in diagnosis or misdiagnosis at the end of the travel, which adds more cost to care and unnecessary travel. What you see here is community health workers who have no help or support. They have to collect the data, manually enter the data, find a map, find the people that they need to support, and provide basic health services such as child and maternal health services. And here she's using a map with push pins to locate the places where women are delivering babies and going. She's highly motivated and is able to sustain her services for some time. But if you ask health workers to continue this over a long period of time, it's very difficult to sustain something like this. So we are now at a very interesting point in the world today, a very good juncture where telemedicine, I think, has reached its tipping point. You can see that mobile phones have exponentially increased in the developing countries and in the developed countries almost reached 100% penetration. The other reasons why mobile telemedicine uh, has increased is open source technologies being embraced by everyone now more than ever before. So Sana took this opportunity to start um, Care Anywhere with mobile telemedicine at a very early stage. We are proud at Sana to be able to have a group of individuals. It is uh, hosted at the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at MIT and has a group of individuals who are basically volunteers and have different backgrounds in business, social science, medicine, and engineering. The vision for SANA is to be able to create a universal mobile information, clinical information platform. We hope that this platform will empower primary health providers, community health workers, and enable early dis uh, disease detection, particularly chronic non-communicable diseases that require long-term care, and improve healthcare delivery in the most resource-poor settings where uh, healthcare is needed most. SENA uses open source technology for the obvious reasons and advantages that it is creative, collaborative, and allows the person who is developing also to take advantage of learning while developing the software. It also is an evolving work in progress, and it can be ad adapted to the local needs. Medical data such as images, text, um, or photographs, audio and video clips can be transmitted from the mobile platform to a back-end server, 
and the backend server is then be accessed by a remote expert. The remote expert then sends the information back to the community health worker who is a frontline health worker and can then um, make the decision on the field on the ground. So here's an example of how it works. This is a diabetic foot ulcer. That is, a picture has been taken by the frontline community health worker and the picture is uploaded to the backend server and a remote expert can access the backend server with, which we use as OpenMRS. And from there, the expert can provide the decision support tool for the community health worker. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the project that I uh, have been involved with, with Sana. And I came across Sana a few years ago um, when I was looking for opportunities to use mobile telemedicine for oral cancer detection. The reason for choosing India, India is one of the largest developing nations with a um, huge population, 70% of the population living in the rural communities. The state of South India, Karnataka, is where uh, we have collaborators for the oral cancer project. Mobile telemedicine has been embraced early in India because of the advantage they have with the inf growing information and communication technology sector and also because of their early um, successes with telemedicine in broadband telemedicine. If some of you have heard of Aravind and Shankar Netralia in teleophthalmology, they've been very successful and several of the other centers have now followed with mobile telemedicine. The Cancer Center is very keen on uh, developing some telemedicine programs to detect uh, cancer early, and they're also interested in cardiovascular disease detection. Why um, chronic diseases? India has the dual burden of both persistent communicable diseases as well as increasing burden of chronic diseases. Early detection of uh, oral cancer can decrease the morbidity and mortality significantly and improve health outcomes as well as the quality of life, so particularly in conditions such as oral and cervical cancer and breast cancer, which have a high incidence in India. This map here demonstrates the countries with high incidence of oral cancer in orange, um, and you can see India up there. It is the sixth most common cancer, and one of the reasons for a high incidence of oral cancer in India is uh, betel nut chewing, tobacco products use, and alcohol. In addition to this group who have a preventable risk factor, there are also a growing number of young individuals who do not have risk factors who can suffer from oral cancer. The way SANA works is the community health worker in the community screens the individual for high risk factors and low risk factors and we perform a targeted screening. Once the targeted screening is completed, they then refer them to the local GP using the mobile uh, platform. The local GP or the dentist who performs the screening in the dental school then uh, communicates through the backend server with the specialist who is in the city and then the specialist this does not solve the problem of behavior, whether the patient will actually go to the specialist if they are actually diagnosed with the condition, but at least we are able to detect the disease early if we can. So here is the community health worker and mobiles, uh, the Sena's mobile client is useful in sharing the electronic medical record with the GP and the specialist. And we also have shared clinical protocols as well as clinical decision support tools for the community health worker to decide which lesion is a precancerous lesion or which lesion is a cancerous lesion. Here, uh, the community health workers are being educated by the physicians locally. Uh, they're also being taught how to use the phone. We have separate programs on how to use the phone's uh, clinical decision support tools as well as separate um, programs to teach them how to detect oral cancer lesions. Here they're being taught how to detect oral cancer lesions and what distances to maintain for the photographs to get ideal photography uh, for the pictures with the phone, which is a high resolution camera with five megapixels. The typical pictures require a distance of about 8 to 10 um, inches uh, from the oral cavity to be able to get a good resolution uh, picture. 
Here are some um, oral cavity lesions which are very advanced and patients in this condition cannot be treated by uh, just surgery alone, require surgery, chemotherapy and often radiation therapy and increases the morbidity and mortality. Last year um, in India we had over 4,000 uh, patients who were screened and we were able to detect um, few oral cancers and 15 precancerous lesions. And so I think we are bringing SANA to the rural uh, communities in India and I'm very proud to say that uh, we will continue. I invite collaborators from here who are interested to take this opportunity to collaborate with us and um, seek to know more about SANA. This is our team in Boston. Uh, I think the tide is high now, and if you take advantage of the tide, if you're shrewd enough, bold enough, and committed enough, then I think um, we can make a difference in the lives of millions. Thank you.